Hope I'm Duncan you. McLeod, and this is the Tech Central podcast. I'm joined on YouTube now by Paul Ducklin from British security company Sophos to talk about the big security news of the week, and uh, that's that WhatsApp has been targeted by an advanced cyber actor exploiting the software's voice calling feature that allows attackers to potentially install malicious code on smartphones. Paul, welcome to the podcast. Well, thanks for having me. It's uh, fun to have something to talk about that everyone's interested in because there are some deep security lessons in here. So let's hope that the end result is that we all get a little bit keener to keep ourselves up to date. Absolutely. And Paul, thanks for taking the time this afternoon. Firstly, where are you exactly today? Well, I'm in a recording booth uh, somewhere near Oxford, just next to the River Thames, 200 kilometers by water from London. Well, no, from the open ocean, I think, actually. So, yeah, in the in Middle England, I think, is the technical term. Yeah. But you're no stranger to South Africa. You were telling me before we uh, we went on air that um, that you lived in Johannesburg and Pretoria for, uh, for a number of years. Yes, I've spent about half my adult life in South Africa, uh, uh, various times and in various places. I've tried the High Felt, I've tried the, the Western Cape by the beach, and... Uh, now for my sins i live in oxfordshire and the weather is really nice today it's almost as good now it's coming up to the middle of summer as a pretoria winter lovely stuff yeah it's um the weather's beautiful here today uh i i must say don't I, rub it in too much will you? <laughs> <laughs> it being may and all we're supposed to be in the middle of summer but you wouldn't have known it till two days ago <laughs> well you're heading into the best time of the year for uh for the uk while well, we're heading into our uh in our, into our winter time so uh, i'm a bit envious but uh paul we're not here to talk about the weather today we're going to talk a bit about uh security and this big news this whatsapp uh, this week about whatsapp um let's, what do we know so far take us uh, through the background of this what what exactly has happened? Um, what is the security vulnerability that's been identified in WhatsApp and what's it been used for? Well, my understanding is that, well, in any network software, there's t traditionally a client and a server, and they have to communicate and exchange data with one another. And each end has to process data that comes in from the other end that may or may not be trusted and has to try and make sense of it and decide, oh, that's an image, that's some speech, that's some text, I need to display it, I need to do this, that and the other. And if either end handles the data that's sent by the other end incorrectly, then the app could crash or worse, it could crash in a way that lets someone at the other end who's crafted that data that they've sent carefully, it could let them actually run or execute some software on the other end of the, of the, of the line, if you like. And normally, you'd expect that that would happen if you get attacked by malware, for example. You get an email, there's an attachment, you open it, bad things happen. You get a web link, you have to click on it, it opens your browser and your browser gets poisoned and something bad happens. But the problem with an, a program like WhatsApp is it's kind of like they're all the time listening for network connections, even when you're not on the uh, using it, because it has to know that there's an incoming call. So what these guys found is a way that without you even realizing it, during the call setup, while each end is exchanging data, they could actually cause your WhatsApp to crash, get control of your phone, and get the WhatsApp process or the WhatsApp program to do what they wanted, including look at WhatsApp data and possibly install other malware without you even answering the call. In other words, you haven't had to go, oh, there's a call from so-and-so, let me click the button. It's during the bit that it's kind of like while your phone's getting ready to ring, if you like, that the bad stuff happens. And that's what makes this a little bit different because WhatsApp is there in the background all the time just in case you get an incoming call. Um, but it, that means it can still be probed and poked with knitting needles, if you like, by, by crooks or in this case, what are they called? Cyber actors. Um, mm -hmm who have your worst interests at heart. Now, it's it's not only Android devices that have been affected by this, but other operating system platforms as well, including Apple's iOS and I think Windows Windows Mobile as well. Uh, is anyone still using Windows Mobile? But, but apparently it's, 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 it's cross-platform and uh, any of those platforms can be attacked using this uh, exploit. Well, that, you, that sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't happen with bugs in software. Generally these days, if you think about modern apps most app vendors when we're talking about mobile phones they like to well 
let's ignore when pretend that windows mobile never existed i loved it but my phone doesn't isn't really much use anymore um most people who are producing mobile apps want to support both android and ios most people are producing desktop apps want to support mac and windows or they want to support all possible browsers so they make their app work in as many different places as possible in the most consistent way and that means that often when you get a bug in one system it kind of shows up in another or if it isn't immediately exploitable in the other somebody can go from an attack against one operating system to use a very figure out a, a similar attack on another so that's the problem is once somebody figures out that there's oh look there's a looks like there's a little bit of a loophole in this app we know how to crash it but we don't know how to exploit it yet that can be the beginning of the that can be the hard work done that then lets bad actors, if you like, figure out on multiple platforms how to exploit or take over an app remotely and get it to, as I say, run anything it wants. So instead of your browser just being a browser, it might turn into an audio recorder. Instead of your telephone system, your WhatsApp app being just for making calls and instant messaging, then it might be going and reading other files on your device as well. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Once somebody gets an app to misbehave and they're able to do so remotely, it's kind of like you've lost control of your device. Do we know what this uh, attack vector was used for and, and who used it and what they did with it? I, all I've seen is speculation. Um, the various, some media are saying there's, uh, I think it's an Israeli company called NSO who make, you know, mobile phone surveillance stuff and they make it openly if you like, they don't sell it to absolutely anybody, but it, 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 they're supposedly, they're not cyber crooks, they're not doing it to try and steal money from you, but they are doing it, for example, to allow law enforcement to, to be able to look behind the scenes or peek behind the scenes on your device, um, apparently. Now, the... The bad news is that means that it sounds like, if that's true, it sounds like someone was good, bad, or indifferent, was able to buy this thing ready to use and to go on Snoop, apparently, on a small number of people. Um, uh, the good news is, I guess, that it's a small number of people involved. Um, but the bad news is that if one group can find it, then we actually don't know who else has found it as well. So that's really the problem here. There's a hole in the app somebody's found it are they the only ones well we can't say we so we don't know to what extent this uh, this exploit might have been utilized in the past but whatsapp has moved to patch the vulnerability so they if have. You, if you install the latest version of the app you can't be exploited in this way is that correct that's the theory of course the problem is that if you think about like what was it just earlier this week uh apple did their may updates they updated ios and mac os microsoft famously come out with their patch tuesday or update tuesday once a month oracle even do it every three months for hundreds of different products whenever you look through those lists that come out from companies like apple and microsoft if you go through it you'll see bugs that are listed as potential remote code execution or rce now rce it sounds very technical and complicated but it means exactly what it says loosely speaking someone at the other end can send you some booby trap data that the program wasn't coded correctly to deal with they can crash the program and get control of your device so the problem with this is this is not only this is not something that's unique to whatsapp and it's not we hope there aren't other exploits but history suggests that there are dozens of this kind of problem found and fixed before they're exploited every month in other apps and even at the operating system layer. So yes, you absolutely need the patch for WhatsApp because we know there's a hole and we know that somebody knows how to exploit it and has done so. So that's the absolute call to arms. However, don't get complacent to go, oh, well, I don't use WhatsApp or I haven't had it loaded for ages, so I'll leave this one because this only happened to a few people. The problem is that this is a symptom of the fact that network, always on network connected software, if it has a bug, because the software is designed to let people outside communicate back and forth with you, there's always a possibility that somebody outside with your worst interests at heart could try and you know figuratively stick a knitting needle through the hole and see what happens so yes get the update because this hole is patched but it's not 
the first hole we've seen in messaging apps and unfortunately it is unlikely to be the last though i suppose uh, what's particular about uh, about whatsapp is that it's used by so many people it's got one and a half billion active monthly users around the world um, which is a significant number and, yeah and that makes a big difference doesn't yeah. it and i suppose that um many of those users either won't be aware that there's a security vulnerability so they're going to be running an unpatched version of whatsapp for an ex possibly an extended period of time and i yeah. the other issue in emerging markets where where um there are hundreds of millions of people who um are what's the word i can use maybe, maybe call them data poor they they um they don't have ready 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 access to uh to a data connection or can't afford to buy a data bundle um, that they are particularly vulnerable to this sort of thing because they aren't able to patch their software as as readily as you and I can, for example. I agree. Um, for example, when, when I was living in South Africa recently, I didn't have any, there, there was no wide connection where I lived, so I just relied on a 4G connection. It was really great. The bandwidth was great. It wasn't too expensive, but I did have to watch it. Mm -hmm. uh you know and, and i'm an it professional i needed to be online so that was a legitimate business expense but i still had to watch myself that when there was an apple update and it said hey this is a mere three gigabytes i couldn't just press the button because that was three gig out of the next 30 days worth of data and you know always it sort of raises that question should i put it off do i care do i just leave it so i i absolutely sympathize with people who don't for whom even a 100 meg update is kind of quite a lot. Yeah. It's really easy to go, you know what, does it really matter? Do I need to get all those Android or iOS updates up there, are hundreds of meg? Why don't I leave it till the next time I'm in a shopping center where I can get free Wi-Fi? Or why don't I leave it until I'm, you know, I'm mm -hmm. visiting a friend who's got a wired connection or something like that? And yes, if, if you're doing that, I understand why you might then unfortunately you are putting yourself at a greater risk, particularly because of the fact that when many patches come out, not this particular WhatsApp one, but with many of them, for example, when they're patched by say Apple or Microsoft, Apple or Microsoft may have discovered these bugs themselves. They may be really critical bugs, but they've found them before the crooks did, they've patched them, they've published the update, and it's almost like that update is like a bit of a red flag to the crook saying, hey, Anyone who hasn't patched will have this security hole in. So go digging, looking for how to exploit that particular hole. So the problem with once a patch, once a bug becomes well known or well publicized, it kind of attracts the attention of crooks. So it's almost that by notifying everyone there's a patch, those don't patch are almost in some ways worse off than they were before. So I don't know what the answer is. If you if you are data poor, how do you go out and suddenly say, well, how do I prioritize this? Mm -hmm. In this case, if you are a WhatsApp fan, because you know if you live in a country with expensive telecommunications, it's really, really, really convenient to, to be able to use WhatsApp to keep in touch with people instead of using the phone network. In this particular case, do get this update. Try and find the money to do it because it is quite important. We can expect people to be trying to exploit this because of just the fact that they don't have to trick you into doing anything they don't have to say hey here's a cool attachment open this fake invoice or they don't have to say oh look you've you've won the rika lottery again respond to this message basically they make a call and while the phone is thinking about processing it before you even realize and whether you answer or not the harm can be done so yeah the, the, i think there is a there is a bit of discord between the developed and the developing world in the way we, we, we've got much better at producing updates and delivering them. But there does seem to be this assumption that everyone in the world can download a gigabyte of stuff whenever they want to. And I now have the luxury that I can do that. Like I've got, if I've got two Macs and I want to update both of them with the latest Mac OS, I can, to be honest, I can just press update on both of them and let them both update two gigs separately yeah. and i don't care <laughs> but for you know when you're on 4g or something you're going to download carefully you're going to put on the usb key and then spread the love around so yeah it is a problem that a lot of we've got a lot more aggressive at patching and the industry is a lot better but it does kind of assume that everybody can download gigabytes of stuff whenever they want 
So it would be nice to see vendors looking at how they can deliver critical security updates that don't require you to go out and get hundreds of megabytes or even gigabytes at a time. Because as you say, for many people, that really isn't an option or it might be an option once a month, once every two months. No, knowing what we know about this exploit so far, um, how, how long do you expect it will be before um, attack groups or hacker groups are able to take advantage of the exploit and, and start to cause, cause a nuisance? I'd like that question is very much the, you know, um, here is a piece of string, um, but no context against which to measure it. So it's hard to say. Let's hope that this bug, it, firstly, let's hope that it was hard to find. And let's hope that once it was found, it was hard to figure out how to exploit. And the good news is that most bugs that get found and reported as potential remote code execution, although they are theoretically exploitable, they never do get exploited because it's kind of too hard to figure out how right. because operating systems and software is a bit more robust. So let's hope that because we know that there's a bug, but not yet exactly how it works, let's hope that nobody else, but if other people are looking like crooks, actively looking, let's hope that it's hard enough that there's plenty of time for all of us even the data poor among us to patch. So I, I don't think it's it's not inevitable that when a bug is found and publicized and everyone knows about it, that a million other crooks will jump in and know how to exploit it. That's not guaranteed, but it is perfectly possible. Um, and that, you know, because it's always possible to work backwards from the new version of the software back to the old, figure what's changed. And sometimes, unfortunately, that can give crooks who aren't smart enough to find the, the how to do the attack going in that direction. It is enough for them to work out how to figure it out going backwards. So let's hope that doesn't happen in this case. Um, so I don't want to put a time frame on it, but let's work on the assumption that it is, let's just say it is certainly not impossible. And this kind of thing has happened before. Bug comes out, everyone's talking about it no one's publicized any details but there's enough information now available that lots more people can suddenly figure out how to use it so let's sort of uh, um hope for the best but prepare for the worst if you know what i mean so the reports um, i've read so far including the the original report that appeared i think it was in the financial times of london um suggested that the uh, the the uh, this has well, the software this exploit was used to attack a limited number of human rights activists phones uh, yeah that's what i read i think i saw it in the telegraph which another yeah. uk publication but yeah. that seems to be the idea and that it seems to be that somebody in the uk twigged that something bad had happened somehow maybe the app crashed i don't know yeah. and uh then it all came out in the wash so, so yeah that, that's what i heard and that's why uh, so we don't know quite how long this has been going on so if you're concerned that you might have been uh, targeted using this exploit how, how do how would you know how would you is there something on your phone you could check uh, to tell whether um you have any malware running what should you be doing well in this particular case i don't know that there any, is anything obvious that you can check for however bear in mind that many people love their apps they get apps say from google play or they get them from the app store which is the only place you can shop if you're on iphone those are better than open slather but still not perfect malware does get in there occasionally and lots of people particularly on android which is obviously the market leader in south africa lots of people love if you like to go off market they set the option that says hey let me get software from anywhere and then they go and install stuff mm. and the problem is any one of those apps could actually already have the kind of secret squirrel stuff inside it that was exploited in this case. So in other words, you could be, when you download an app and you invite it into your phone, you might not just be bringing a security hole, you could be bringing some dodgy stuff along with it. And we've seen lots of cases where, um, um, particularly in, in Southeast Asian markets, where apps appear on, on, on alternative download markets, 
the person who created the app probably wasn't a crook. They were just maybe a bit sloppy and they figured, oh, well, I, hey, I could get ads from ad code from this guy. I can get, you know, the pop up messaging from this guy and they jam all this stuff together. They build an app and then they find out that one of the bits that they've built into their program that you've invited onto your phone is actually run by a load of rogues. So it wasn't that anyone had to break in because they thought you were a human rights lawyer. Basically, you invited badware into your yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah. So my yeah. advice is, uh, particularly if you have Android, get yourself an antivirus. There are loads of ones available. Sophos has a free one if you want to get hold of it. What that can do is it can advise you when you've got uh, weak security settings that you might not realize. It can advise you if you're visiting a dodgy website or if you're making a dodgy connection. Sometimes, even if you miss the malware, it has to send its data somewhere if the crooks want to get it off your phone. And sometimes you can just pick up that data traffic and block it off. And of course, can scan and give an extra layer of vetting to apps before you allow them to come in, including apps that are sneakily installed, perhaps by, by people who have your worst interests at heart. So an antivirus on your phone, it's not going to be perfect. No security product can detect 100% of threats, as we saw in this case. Somebody put a lot of effort into being able to hack phones and kept it to themselves because it's kind of worth a lot of money to them. Um, but nevertheless, most people are inviting a lot of foreign content into their phones. They're trusting people that they don't really know. So an antivirus can go an awful long way, not only to stop you installing bad stuff in the first place, but if you do install something questionable that then starts doing rogue activity later, that may be able to detect it and warn you so that you know that something bad happened. Now, Paul, a lot of people, including journalists, rely on the end-to-end -end encryption that's built into WhatsApp to do communication, and they assume that that communication is secure and it's not going to be intercepted by a third party. Are, 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 they, yeah. are they wrong to trust platforms like WhatsApp? Should journalists, for example, who, who need to talk to, um, to sources confidentially, should they be using something else? Well... <laughs> That's a very open question because there are lots of different tools that and, and, you know, different activists and different journalists and different whistleblowers will prefer different stuff. And that's kind of good that the, the, the more tools there are, the more of a moving target it is, the less of a monoculture that exists. But the crazy thing, well, not the crazy thing, but the, the and it's not amusing either, but it's still worth a wry smile is that in this case, the the end to end encryption in WhatsApp, as far as I know, that would have worked fine if you'd taken the call, then the call would have gone, um, you know, from one end to the other through WhatsApp servers unintercepted,ly and the encryption would have been fine. Mm -hmm. What happened is that it was just that it was the WhatsApp program that was used, attacked because it's so popular, because so many people just have it on their phone running all the time in case they receive a call. It, it was that software that was exploited to allow other stuff to be to be infiltrated onto your phone so it wasn't that and once you have that kind of control over a phone even if you're only taking over that one app and you can't break out of that app and see what other apps are doing of course if you imagine if you if you're if you suddenly magically are able to run your malware alongside or inside whatsapp as it were mm -hmm. then not only can you listen into the call you can actually look at anything else that WhatsApp is allowed to look at. So if you've given WhatsApp permission to read your photos, then malware that insinuates itself into WhatsApp can do exactly the same. So the irony here is that it wasn't the encryption that was cracked. It was just that the fact that this software is very popular mm -hmm. and is kind of always on, always listening, and therefore is prepared to have these conversations with untrusted outsiders, right, right. even when you don't realize. Right. So that's the problem there. So which app would I recommend if you want to contact somebody and be absolutely secure? There is no right answer. You know, you kind of would probably have backed WhatsApp, right? It's owned by Facebook. Facebook are quite keen on security these days. They have great programmers. They've done a lot of good open source work in, in you know, how you tools that help people build more secure systems. In this case, it was just a bug in like the world's most popular communications app. You know, would you be better off picking an app that very few people use because maybe it's off the crook's radar? Mm. Well, the problem is it that may put you onto the radar of other people who figure, hey, there's only a hundred thousand people using 
you know, secret app X, Y, Z, mm. but those are the 100,000 people in the world that we're more interested in than anybody right. else. Right. So there, unfortunately, there is no correct answer to this question other than keep your eyes and ears open. And if you hear of a potential bug in software, and particularly if there's a patch, don't wait. You know, if you if if you're going to be a whistleblower or an activist or whatever, then things like patches, you kind of you can't afford literally or figuratively to be data poor because you always have to worry about you always have to take the risk that there's a bug that nobody's found yet in the software. But the bugs that everybody already knows about, well, the one thing you can be sure about is that everybody knows about them. Yeah, for sure. Well, Paul, so that wasn't much of an answer. I don't. There isn't really a clear answer that yes, this software is better than that software, and yeah. this software will never have a bug, and that software is no good because I don't like Facebook. Yeah. If you don't like Facebook and you don't trust WhatsApp, don't use the app. It is as simple yeah. as that. That's yeah. a decision you have to make. But how do you judge the security of an app? Um, that can be very difficult. Um, you know, even if you, it's open source and you can get the source code and look through it, mm. good luck finding every known bug. You know, we just had one in the networking stack in the Linux kernel, I believe, that's been there for some time. And suddenly all the experts in the world are going, oh, golly, there's this bug. And even though it's open source, nobody noticed it for ages. So sometimes yeah. bad yeah. stuff slips through the cracks. Yes. Well, kind of a related question. And and, and the, the, just to before we wrap up today, I often get the question um, whether... Uh, and I, I get it from people who are concerned about their, their their privacy and having their communication intercepted. Is there any reason to consider WhatsApp versus Telegram versus Signal? Are any of them any more secure than the other, or you're okay using any of them, generally speaking? I don't really know. I haven't analyzed those apps myself, so I don't really know. I, like, I, like I said just now, the problem is that there isn't anything magic about any sort of secret security uh, smoke or whatever that that you could say, well, it's definitely inside Telegram or inside Signal that isn't inside WhatsApp. Right. And there are a lot of people who go, oh, well, I'd never use WhatsApp if I was a whistleblower because it's owned by Facebook and that's yeah. Zuckerberg. And, you know, so, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd stay away from the man, as it were. Yeah. The point is, in this case, this really wasn't about whether or not you 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 like Facebook or think they have noble aims and goals and whatever. The fact is that even the WhatsApp programmers, who you'd imagine are, you know, in the in the in the the, the top percentiles of yeah. people who care about security made a blunder a plain and simple buffer overflow blunder as far as i know mm -hmm. so there's nothing magic about telegram or signal for example or any other app that comes along that means that it is automatically immune to this kind of problem you kind of hope that no app particularly one that claims to take security seriously would have problems like that but you know you only have to look at the at, for example, it may not be a great example, but it's kind of, it, and, and it's not about secrecy really, but it does show that people who have the word security in their product don't always get it right. You've only got to look at the many security blunders we've seen in so-called security webcams that you can buy. Right. You, know, you buy a webcam, you put it inside your home, it's there so you can keep an eye on your home and be more secure. And lo and behold, <laughs> the people who are selling you a security device have been shabby at security so the crooks can use your camera to find out when you're not at home and come and rob you blind and you know so any programmer can make a blunder mm. even those that are trying really hard obviously by by investing time in you know meeting and talking to people in the community of users of security conscious communications apps you can get a feel for how strongly the, that security the, the programming community takes its security and how likely there are to be bugs and importantly if there is a bug how quickly will they get on it how will they respond how rapidly will they deal with it mm -hmm. it seems that in this case facebook and whatsapp they did respond very promptly once they knew of course it's an open question how long they didn't know and that to me that's a good sign but it doesn't prove anything about 
any bugs that are still in the software that nobody's found yet, mm -hmm. including Facebook, all the people who make Telegram, all the people who make Signal. So the answer is, you know, if you are in a position where the security is really, really critical to you, like you're an activist or a political observer or a human rights lawyer or whatever, then you really have to do your homework and find out how what sort of trust you have in the in the development community at large yeah. so it's not something you can just go to a review sheet and go okay i'll i'll there are the top three i'll just pick one of them mm -hmm. um so the, the the simple version is there's no right answer um response time when there is a bug and the nature of the response is something that obviously will help you decide whether you can trust somebody when things are really going badly and that's probably what matters more than any glib claims they make when things are going well well it's clear that the message uh, from uh, this discussion is uh, patch your software update your whatsapp and do so immediately if you haven't done so already paul definitely with whatsapp yeah paul ducklin is with uh, british security company sophos thanks so much for taking us through this and thanks for your time today oh thanks for having me i enjoyed it